I'm about to make a shaft um, for this tool post mount, uh, which is going to uh, be attached to this solid mount here. Um, and it will be used to locate this tool post, which is from the multi-fix tool post. And it will be used to position it on the top face there. Um, the shaft will come up through the central hole here. Um, and then uh, it will be clamped down with the nut from above as it normally would be and um, so I've sketched the shaft so I'll zoom in and show you that um, so it's a it's a 20 millimeter bore that's going through the multi-fix uh, tool post so the diameter of this shaft is 20 millimeters um, it has a, an H6 fit um, so if anyone's wondering what that means um, that relates to BS 4500 um, a reference to which can be seen in a Zeus book which is a really useful um, reference uh, book for engineers and in here uh, H6 relates to this fit here so it's a clearance fit uh, but it's a very close clearance fit um, and this is on, this is based on the whole basis um, part of the standard. So what that means is that you, um, you make the shaft to fit a standard sized hole. Um, so the way it works is uh, we're looking at making a, a 20 millimeter shaft. So so that puts us into the 18 to 30 um, shaft diameter category, which is there. So as we read across to here, um, H6 is the shaft, little h6 is the shaft, um, capital H7 is the hole. Um, so the tolerances um, that apply to those hole diameters are um, on the hole that can be minus nothing plus 21 microns. The shaft can be plus nothing minus 13 microns. So what that means is that this shaft diameter here of nominal 20 millimeters um, can cannot be bigger than 20 um, but can be smaller by 13 microns if that makes sense i hope it does um, <clears throat> on this shaft halfway along um, i'll be turning an undercut into here um, and i hope that is clear on on the sketch um, so the undercut starts here, drops down, goes across and comes up to here. Um, so that's going to be 10 millimetres wide, um, which fits a spanner nicely. So this is a 17 millimetre spanner. Um, so I, I'll be milling some flats as well, which will uh, correspond with the undercuts in here. And uh, those flats will be 17 millimetres cross flats. Um, the reason I've put the undercut in here is, and I see this mistake a lot on bits of tooling and such, when people put um, spanner flats on things, it's very likely that you're going to burr the edges of those flats when you use the spanner against it. And if you're using that diameter as a location diameter, those burrs are going to cause you a problem. So it's good practice to put an undercut where you have spanner flats if you're going to have a precision fit of something going over the top of it. And then either end, there's an M M12 thread, um, and that's 15 millimeters long, which includes um, a small undercut here, just to clear the, the corner. So um, that's the part, um, and I'll show you some time-lapse footage now of me turning that part on the lathe. That you travel along with there's one day here and the next day gone sometimes you bend sometimes you stand sometimes you turn your back to the wind there's a world outside every darkened door but blue won't haunt you anymore 
more Where the brave are free and love her so Come ride with me to the distant shore We won't hesitate to break down the garden gate There's not much time left today Just thought I'd show you this stage. Um, I'm machining um, individual T-nuts now. Um, so uh, I showed you previously the one-piece T-nut with the extended tenon, uh, which is what will align the solid, pool, um, solid tool post mounts. Um, so at the front end, um, and this will make more sense when I show you all the parts together, rather than one solid piece, I'm making three separate T-nuts as normal really um, so it's an over it's, it's, it's an oversized piece of material um, and what I've done is I've milled the tenon or across all the, the full length and then um, once I've got the right width on on the t-nut profile um, I've then just milled I've milled them to width and I've milled in here with an 8 mil uh, end mill and then and at the moment I'm just about to drill and tap these three holes and then there'll be another operation after this where I'll flip this over and I'll mill across the top uh, taking this down to thickness and then these will be individual pieces then so I don't need to get the hacksaw out um, don't need a slitting saw um, there's a little bit of material wastage but it's not much um, so it's just a useful way of, um, of dealing with individual parts that need to be broken into separate pieces. Um, so I'll bring you back when, it, when they're all done. Okay, here we are then. So um, this is the second op you've just seen on a time-lapse video. 
um, and I've just been milling the, the back down to the required thickness um, so that um, we've got the right overall height now on the T-nut um, and as you can see we've got three individual pieces now because we've broken through the cuts that we made on the previous operation. So while these parts are in the vise I'm going to deburr what I can because they're easy to hold this way. Um, I'll deburr the back of the uh, tap holes and, um, and then we'll whip them out and finish them off. Yeah. So Okay, an update on where we've got to. Um, the uh, the main parts, the the solid mounts here, um, I decided to surface grind these three faces in the end. So I put the bullet, set the machine up, and and uh, and ground them, and they look it looks quite nice, uh, I think. So that's the orientation that will be on the machine. Um, I changed the design of the shaft. Um, to go on here so instead of having to um, threaded spigots on the end um, I've drilled and tapped it M12 um, and I screwed a, a high tensile screw into this end uh, locked it with um, 638 and then I cut the end off on the lathe chamfered it and that will screw into here um, so that will pulls down nice and square so that's good um, and instead of having a nut on the top, I've decided um, when it all goes together, I've decided on having a high tensile cap screw in the top there. Um, so, um, three T nuts for the front. Um, the two outer ones are a little bit narrower and they've got an offset hole. Uh, that's just so that the ends of the T nuts don't overhang. The width because I've pushed the threads out as wide as I can go on here um, and then there's the one piece t-nut at the back which you've seen so um, I'm gonna do a time lapse now and then um, I'll put it all together So that's the finished article. So um, all assembled, all clamped down. Um, I'll give it a final tighten when it's on the machine. Um, I'll need to set the rotation um, when it's on the machine so that I um, at zero degrees um, or at 90, well, what's this at? 10 degrees, um, just so that I can get the, uh, the tool holder square um, to the axis of the machine and then once I've got that in place um, what I'll do is I'll take it off the lathe again and um, there's a couple of holes in the main post here that go all the way through um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll set it up on the mill and I'll drill through and ream uh, one of those holes and I'll lock it in place with a pin so that there's absolutely no way that this can rotate uh, so that this cannot rotate relative to that um, it's pretty sturdy and solid as it is um, but that would be the finishing touch really so we're very nearly there next time you see it it'll be on the lathe 